The Rugby Hive is thrilled to feature the Super Rugby Americas competition and talk with American Raptors head coach Sarah Shabbat. Firstly, Sarah, thanks so much for taking out your busy schedule. I know the scrum machine was calling, but we're really happy to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm sorry I'm a bit froggy. Got bit by the January. Yes, exactly. Well, listen, it just goes with your rough and tumble profile, so that's totally okay. I firstly want to say congratulations, obviously, being a head coach of professional rugby team in the U.S. It's probably something when you were a young kid, you didn't it was didn't exist and you didn't think it might be impossible. So talk us through, what is it, how does it feel? You've broken down so many barriers and now you're leading this program. You know, it's kind of funny because I, I don't really ever think about it. It never really comes to my mind until someone actually asks about it. You know, I, I've always approached rugby a very simple thing. You know, it's, it's a group of people that are trying to accomplish something and, you know, we're doing our best to guide them and give them every tool possible. So it's something I really have never thought about, like I said, until we have these conversations. Yeah. And then and then what about your playing journey? Of course, I, I read a bit about how you started in the basketball court. Uh, you played softball, you were a track athlete in your early sporting career. So how did you find rugby after that? I found it completely by accident, actually. Funny story, I was going to join a sorority of all things during that first couple of weeks of like freshman orientation. And I was just bebopping around looking at the chess club, the French club, Delta Zetas, and then rugby was playing. And I was like, Whoa. Now, wait a minute, I can do that. And I was pretty realistic about my track career. Like I knew I wasn't going to go to the Olympics and I, I knew the diamond circuit wasn't for me, but, you know, I found rugby and then I just took to it. But yeah, that's that's how I found it completely by accident. See, I always love the stories unearthing how people get to the game. Nowadays, it's obviously it's more prevalent in the US, but the journey here is, is different from other countries. So multiple choice question for you. How many people have you run over on the rugby field since you picked up that ball at college? Is it 1,500, 3,750, or 5,900? <laughs> oh, oh, man. I don't know. We should put that out on a doodle poll. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to uh, we'll, we'll have to scale the interwebs. I, I only bring it up because uh, uh, when you were playing, I mean, what a ferocious athlete on the field! I would be scared if I was standing in front of you to tackle you. And I know that you've run over so many people. So, did you have some highlights? Anything you want to share about your playing days? I know you're such a humble player, but you got to play at the highest level, and it must have been very special. Yeah, I did. Um, it was it was a tremendous opportunity. I think more importantly was you know the people that I got to do that with. You know, I'm still in touch with them. And it's it's great because if you really look at like my class, that 2014, 2010 group, you know, the number of coaches and athletes that have gone on and continue to give through different programs. Um, it's pretty cool to see. It was a real special group and I was privileged to have to be a part of it. And the other cool thing, too, that I feel very, very fortunate about is my whole career, I got to play for really quality coaches. I mean, two of them just got put into the Women's Hall of Fame um, and were Kathy Flores Lifetime Achievement winners. But my whole career has just been one quality coach after another. And, and those are definitely lessons and things that, you know, they did even impacted me as an 18 year old that I'm trying to bring with me and make sure that I continue those quality things that they gave me. So that's kind of the cool thing, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree with you. Take the best qualities from the coaches you had into your current coaching. Um, and, and when did that journey begin for you? When did you you know, decide, okay, I've now done with playing. I want to get involved in, in coaching and give us just a brief highlights of the some of the teams you've been involved with over the years. I mean, my journey into coaching was a complete accident, to be honest with you. I had to have my knee replaced and then I couldn't play anymore. I, I never intended to coach. And I think basically I got into coaching because I had quality people around me that were like, boy, we got to give Shabbat something to do at least Tuesday, Thursday. So um, the Denver Water Dogs gave me an opportunity. And I don't know if you know much about them, but they're a ragtag bunch of tryhards. Um, and I really enjoy them. And then Mose Timoteo gave me an opportunity at CSU's men's program. And then Mark Bullock and Luke Gross gave me an opportunity to coach with the PRP. It's kind of funny, like I've only coached men. Other than CSU, it's always just been senior side men. Yeah. And then Mark Bullock gave me an opportunity with the XOs and the crossover program. And, you know, and now now we're sitting here. Yeah, exactly. I, it's an amazing journey how quickly things accelerated. So I know I know Mose is not currently he's he's going off to do other things. So what other coaches do you have around you that you're going to work with this season? Brendan is absolutely amazing. He's running our attack and backs. He does a fantastic job. He's a real stickler at detail, X's and O's. 
it's a real privilege to get to work with him. He came from the Gilgroni staff, so he brings that experience of, of a high-level environment. Uh, Leo Centenari, former Argentina international, he's running our defense and helping with lineouts, and he brings just another, a young coach, fresh kind of off the playing career, ended in 2018. Um, so, but he brings that intensity and some excitement. The staff, the staff right now is young, but we're very eager. Brilliant. And then how would you describe your coaching style? You know, what sort of game can the fans expect to see the Raptors play this year? Number one, my style, I think, I don't know. You know, I, I wouldn't be foolish enough to put myself in a corner because I am so young, like young and developing. I would say it's going to be ever developing and changing and growing. I mean, if, if my coaching career resembles my playing career, it's going to have a lot of different shifts, movements, um, ups and downs for certain. But I, I think that's a, that's a lifetime evolution. And really I'm just in my infancy of trying to figure out, you know, who and what I am, but um, there are definitely some core values that I'd like to stick to what the fans can see. Um, <laughs> I'd like to say we'll build our team around a great set piece uh, first and foremost, and then, you know, we want to play smart with it. We have a young athletic team, um, and we want to make sure that we play expansive rugby in the right areas of the field. And then we want to be stalwarts on defense. You know, we'll give up some meetings, but we want to keep it off the board. Yeah, that's brilliant. I kind of figured it would be a centered around. I mean, set piece is such an important part of the game. Uh, to compete. So let's talk about this thrilling opportunity, the America's uh, Super Rugby uh, competition. Inaugural event, five other countries, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. So what excites you about this challenge? And then a follow-up question, what are the goals for this year? I mean, I think the ch- the the excitement is, is kind of the unknown. Um, once again, like we're kind of the first to do this. So first American club to play in an international comp. So we don't know. And it's very interesting league. It's a high-powered league. It should be exciting to play in. But the honest fact of it is, is like, we don't know because we haven't done it. I think for goals, as far as goals go, it's got to be week by week. And it's got to be all about us accomplishing the the things that we set out to do. We like keep things in threes. So it's those three things. And then... For us, it's just stay in that fight, stay in the fight, stay in the fight. And then in terms of like the makeup of the squad, I know you in the past, you've had a lot of cross of athletes come to rugby. I see you've got a host of different countries represented on the squad, a handful of capped internationals. Are you leaning towards, you know, blending that experience with some of the newer players or how are you guys going to take care of that this year? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you've seen Glendale as a program the past couple of years like scurrying, looking for crossover athletes, looking for for the guys that we can mold into potential uh, rugby players going forward. And and what you've seen is is we've paired out those players and we've taken them as far, but you don't know what you don't know until you know. And so what we really need to do is bring in those experienced players to push those players that we've ID'd to that next level. And that's really what we're looking for those veterans to do. And would you say, because I know that part of the goal was, well, initially, you know, the Glendale Raptors played in Major League Rugby for a few seasons and it became the Colorado Raptors. And then the Academy, as you mentioned, producing players like David Still, who on the Sevens World Series this past year has absolutely lit it up. And a lot of foreigners are talking about, you know, uh, your program and obviously what it can do for the game in the U.S. So are there two kind of different goals? Obviously do well in this competition, but at the same time develop American athletes that can go on and represent the United States. Is that still a focus? A hundred percent. And we want to be able to help who's ever in our program to ascend to the highest level, whether it be with the U.S. team. You know, um, like you said, we have some young young players from other parts of the country or other countries, excuse me. And we want them to just strive to, to the highest level that they aim for. For me, like privilege then to represent your country and hear your national anthem play and you know, and and we want those guys to to have that opportunity in the best position. The last thing for you, the fans are going to be tuning in. Obviously, you're going to be playing, uh, you know, six matches away in South America, six matches at home at Infinity Park. Uh, what message do you have for them as you get into this first inaugural uh, season? <laughs> you know, every bit of support counts. We'll be excited to see you out at the park. Tune in. I think this team's going to 
you know, grind and, and do you guys solid. And um, yeah, just come out to the park for a good time. Enjoy this beautiful game. That's beautiful, Sarah. I want to thank you for your time, for joining the Rugby Hive. I'll see you at Infinity Park for those home games. We'll be commentating those. I uh, look forward to meeting up for a cold beverage afterwards as well. And uh, again, congrats on everything you've achieved so far, but more importantly, what the Raptors are doing for rugby in this country and beyond uh, taking part in such a historic competition is going to be thrilling to watch. Hey, thank you so much, Dallin, and thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Awesome. Get better. Raise that voice. Yeah. <laughs> Too much yelling. Uh